Hello, this video is my attempt to cover the very basics of creating mobile responsive header templates with Beaver Builder. So I've talked in the past about how we can replace our theme headers with Beaver Builder layouts, but what I've not talked about is how we can then make those layouts look good on other devices. And this is a topic I've not seen covered anywhere. I have seen some people expressing their frustration and not being able to get them to look good and certainly I'm someone who've changed my methods all the time and probably employed more complex CSS than I've needed to on this. So even though there are lots of nuances to this and possibilities, it might be helpful to some, particularly those who are new to Beaver Builder, to just show a few ways of tackling this. So I've created one very simple header here and other versions of it, and I've employed different methods to align them on different devices. So let me first just show you with this header template one what I'm trying to do here I'm just going to adjust my browser so you can see it this is probably going to be a bit wobbly by the way there is the link to this page it is on my live demo site so you can come in and play around with the templates yourself or you can view them here and that might be easier because otherwise I might have to refresh numerous times to be able to show you how things are okay so what I wanted is the logo to the left and menu items clinging to the right on my desktop. And I wanted it such so that it stayed that way and that these menu items didn't fold under themselves as you sometimes see happening until we reach the next break point for medium devices where I've wanted the logo to go center. So this is kind of iPad size and I have wanted the links to then fall below those but still be available as they are. And finally, when we move to the next breakpoint for small devices or mobile devices, I've set it so it shows the hamburger icon and we still have that to the right and with the logo pretty much to the left. I'll talk about this in a minute. And so that will adjust to different mobile sizes as well. And this first example is perhaps the sort of cleanest method of doing this because it's only using two columns. It's using the least HTML and CSS in its output. And um, let me show you how I've done that. I'm in the page builder now, so I'm just going to press P and that's going to take it out of preview mode. So we can see that this is just using two columns left and right. On the left hand side, I have placed in there a photo module. I've made sure that I've got my URL, it's connecting to my homepage, so it behaves as we would expect when we click on logos in the header and takes us to home. I've also set the alignment to center. And let me come out of this. And it's not showing center because what I've done is with the second column, I've pushed this right up to the point where the logo would get smaller. So I've taken it right up to the size there, which has forced it to the left, except I haven't taken off any padding here. So it is a little bit, so you could adjust that as you want. And with the right-hand side column, I've placed in there the Beaver Builder menu module. And to make sure everything's aligned to the right there, I have set the alignment right. So it's always gonna stay right there. And also under the general here, I've decided to set the hamburger icon just to show on small devices. I mean, I can set it as I want or not at all on these. Okay, so just something to say on this right alignment. If you are somebody who's used to using the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder or Power Pack, you'll probably see that on their advanced menu module they have the options to be able to align these menu items left right and center according to the size of the devices but you can't do that on beaver builder which uh, it might be nice to have that in beaver builder but there are ways around it and that's what i'm kind of showing in this okay so that's how it's working and everything's been then positioned not by the modules themselves but by the columns so by setting the widths at different devices for those columns I'm able to create the effect so let me just first bring this to the medium view okay there we are so what I've done now is let's go into that first column here and go into the column settings 
and you will see under advanced under the responsive layouts that is to display always of course because it is and we've set the medium device width to a hundred percent so what is happening here is that this column now is a hundred percent and it's making because the module was set to center this is now centering within this hundred width and of course with this being set to a hundred it's forcing column below it and that's what's happening here and I'll just show you here that on the small devices we've got it set to 50. Let me come out and just show you on this one. So to create this illusion that this module, which is right aligned, is kind of centered, I have, if we go to the column settings here, under advanced again to the responsive layouts, I've set this to 80%. Now you might have to adjust according to the size of your logo or what's above it. Now, and 50% on the next one. Now, this kind of works. It's not perfect because it's not absolute center. So as you're adjusting slightly, it will go a little bit off center with the logo, but maybe it's something you can live with. It's not absolute, but it's probably close enough depending on what content you have. So that's the way around it. And of course, I set them to 50-50 on the next, as you can see here, and Again, the logo is in the module there centered, so it is coming away from the left here, and this is here. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky to adjust it according to the sizes. I could have set this, say, to 40% and this to 60% to get this to shove a little bit to the left, but then you get this issue as they push on about the, the size of this logo getting smaller. So it's one way you might need to adjust, but on my next example, I've sort of got around that. Well, actually, my next example is something else. Let me just cover this quickly. So this is all being done with the columns here, but sometimes you want other content on one side, like I want this telephone number here. So I've left this exactly the same as above here, but where I wanted this content in, I decided that I couldn't have this move around. So I've added a column within a column and I've made this hide when we get to the smaller devices. So if I go and click on this module here, you can see I've used the text editor module, but here under the advanced, I have set this to display on large devices only. So the column stays intact as it is, and this just disappears so it doesn't get in the way and doesn't uh, align wrongly as I've got it. If you see here, I've aligned the text to the right here. Okay, but yes, on the header template three, which I was going to mention about positioning um, this logo left, one thing you can do is to employ an empty column and just set that for different widths here. So what I've done here is in the main version, it's best probably if I just come and go into edit this column so you can see, let's go into the column settings here. So in the standard view here, it's just taking up, I could probably zero this out or put it to one, but it, it'll break before we re this menu reaches here, so it's not a problem. And what I've done here is actually, it's not going to show on desktops anyway, because I've set this to just work on medium and small devices. So what I've done here is by adding this extra column in, I force this a little bit further to the left on those smaller devices where there's more uh, to play around with, if you like, uh, where I've needed more this to be pushed up, but this still to have plenty of sort of room, but doesn't need as much room on those smaller ones, if that makes sense. Anyway, it's just a technique you can do. You can just set this to show an extra empty column and kind of position this one to force other content into different areas on this. Okay, let me come out of that and finally cover what I think is the easiest approach to doing that, and that is simply to set up different versions for the different displays. Now here I'm setting this just to show on both of the smaller versions, so the medium and the small, but you could have a third one and just set this one up for the display for the desktops. And that's pretty easy to do because then again, we can just go into these individual columns and edit them and make sure that 
under the advanced that only showing for large devices for each of these and then can disappear. And in fact, what I've done here, because I wanted to keep it all within one row, I've used columns within columns here. But you could set one up on its own row and then another row and place your new content in there and then set in the row your settings so you can uh, so you can decide to display or hide the whole row instead so that might be easier to work with i just decided to show it this way to just remind folks that you can use columns within columns so if you wanted to just keep this as a saved row rather than have lots of rows this would be a way around doing it now, there were a few problems I had with this method because I didn't like the fact that, of course, you're going to create all these different versions. So that is, in terms of its output onto your page, is going to be more duplication. You're going to have the HTML is going to be there in your source code and you're going to have more CSS to present this as well. So I was a little bit put off and I was a little bit concerned about any SEO consequences with this one. But reading about a little bit on it, uh, there's different views and of course you may have a different view and I'd love to hear more but I think the overall view was that well Google kind of want us to use mobile responsive and it's quite common to show different displays for different devices something that would like us to do and they could probably pick up on the fact that this uses media queries to show that we're not trying to cheat things we're not trying to duplicate our content to get better rankings and that they probably understand when there are duplicate duplicate navigation sections on a page here. So I've become more relaxed about this. My only concern again is to just kind of keep things simple for clients. If they did need to change a background image that I wanted them to be able to do, then there's these two displays. And I thought, well, this is a nice way to get around it. What you can also do here, and I've done this in this case on a column, is to set it to a little note for them which is just set to be only visible when you're logged in. So let's just go to the column settings here. And under advanced, you can see you have to be logged in as a user. And I can actually set the capacity, which type of users can see this message. So there's a little explanation that this above is for the desktops and this is for below and of course this gives you a lot more flexibility and room to maneuver and chances to change the layout and finally i've done another version here and this isn't going to make sense without me just showing you i've opened up in cognito mode that you can here we go uh, also style these buttons this is what it looks like if you're using the menu and here I've done some styling on the toggle as well. And this is included here as well. If I wanted to move my drop down, because it, it's on the left by default, I can just stick in this little bit of CSS and then that's going to align this to the center over here if you want to do that. So it's just a little bit of added CSS I've put in. And I think that's probably enough for this introduction. I'd like to talk much more and set up more examples with headers. I'd love it if anybody wanted to start sharing their header templates and explanations, because I think this is something that takes up a lot of time in many of our projects. So I hope this just introduces some debate on this and I hope it's useful. If you like this video, then as always, please give me a like, please share it as well and subscribe to my channel if you like these kind of videos. Thanks very much. I'm going to say goodbye. Bye bye.